Hey, good morning and happy Sunday. <laughs> okay. Why is he playing Walk This Way with a Talk Box? Um, because Joe Perry did that on Live Bootleg. Anyhow. And uh, Joe Perry, incidentally, for you guys keeping score on the gear, he did not play an actual heel talk box, which was all the rage, which was invented, kind of invented by Joe Walsh sort of thing. Um, but he used a, a thing called an airbag, which looked like a like a, a hippie sort of purse with this, this streakly things. And you'll, you'll see you'll see him. You'll, you'll see pick shots of him. He looks like he's wearing, has like a purse. Like a, like a bag, like a European carry-all kind of thing. <laughs> but it's got the tube coming out of it, and that's what he uses. And if you see him, I see, I think, actually, well, you won't see Aerosmith Live anyways, but if you see him playing stuff like Sweet Emotion or, you know, um, I don't think he ever played Walk This Way with a Talk Box ever again after after that tour. I don't can't remember what tour it was. But um, I'll tell you what year it was, though, because in my handy-dandy... Favorite out one of my favorite albums of all time, Aerosmith Live Bootleg. Uh, it will tell you right here in our gatefold liner notes. Uh, not on that side of the album. Bear with me, as you know, we're not so savvy on how to get these back in. We'll leave it out. Um, Wow, I even got the poster in here. Amazing. Uh, walk this way. Uh, March 2nd in Detroit. March 2nd, 1978. Joe Perry was using the talk box on Walk This Way. And I, I had a very, uh, in the year 8th uh, grade, might be 7th grade, I was at Alan A. Martin Public School in Mississauga. And... Uh, I had a very cool music teacher. Can't remember his name, but uh, very cool music teacher. And uh, we actually had band instruments in what, what some people might call middle school grade, you know, six, seven, eight, eighth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade for you U.S. people following along at home. <laughs> um, so you, you, you let you bring your albums in. So we would bring our albums in. So I brought in. Um, Aerosmith live bootleg the one of the I think I've said this before on many times on the show probably the one of the, the I think it was the first album I bought with my own money um and like I was working I was allowance money that I saved up right you know that five you know that two two to five dollars that you got once a week to buy you buy your candy and stuff like that um yeah so I bought this I brought it in and I played I picked the you know you got to pick the song you wanted to play um and I so I picked come together because, you know, my music teacher was older, you know, this, this old guy. Later on in life, we find out that those guys were pretty young. You know, those, 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 those high school and, and our, our teachers were pretty young. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I put Come there's a version of Come Together on here, which was from <laughs> Walton, Massachusetts uh, in 1978, again, 1978 tour. And then he saw Lennon and McCartney on there. He goes, oh, really? This is, oh, yeah. So, yeah, I said, yeah, it's a take on the Beatles song. I thought you'd recognize that. And maybe you won't go, maybe you recognize Aerosmith, which was one of the biggest bands in the U.S. at the time. Um, and then uh, right after Come Together on the album was Walk This Way. And then you heard, you know, Joey Kramer did the incredible drum drum intro. You know, when he, when he, when he did the actual cue or whatever, live cue. And then uh, Joe comes in with the talk box on the guitar, and all the girls in the class went, "Ew!" Cause it sounded like he was burping into the mic. Yeah, but yeah, whatever. It's Aerosmith, Smith. It's Joe. Joe is the coolest guitar player on the planet. Uh, still is. I saw an Instagram video this week of him just standing there on stage. I guess he's playing with the. Is that the Johnny Depp band? I don't even know who he's playing with now. Um, and then he's just, just out in the crowd, got the, you know, the cool clothes on that only he can wear, 
and uh, you know, wearing leather pants on stage before. Well, I guess I guess Jim Morrison wore leather pants, <laughs> but he was he made that cool. He made that whole look cool. He made these guitars cool. BC Rich was all the rage in um, in the late late seventies when they became into fruition. It was kind of, their BC Rich was kind of like the early Ibanez where everybody had to have one, you know. And then, you know how in the eighties everyone was playing Ibanez, you know, Satch, Gilbert, uh, Vi gaggle of players, Reb Beach, we were all playing Ibanez guitar. All of a sudden, everyone was playing BC Rich guitars at the end of the 70s because they had the cool shapes and that. And uh, the Mockingbird shape, which is what this is, um, is probably one of maybe five of the coolest guitar shapes other than your Les Pauls and Fenders and stuff like that. But um, out, of the, out of the weird shapes, this has got to be the coolest shape, don't you think? I think. Um, and then... Jill Perry had a uh, solid mahogany mockingbird that he used. If you look up a clip on YouTube of them on the sh on the awful movie Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, which had an all star cast in the seventies, and uh, that's why Aerosmith did the song "Come Together" because in the movie they they perform "Come Together." Um, I can't remember what their name was. Were there? They had a weird. Some, something of the villains. I don't can't remember. You Aerosmith people will know. Um, and he played the Mockingbird, and, and his story was the mocking the mahogany Mockingbird, which was so, a solid piece of mahogany, was so heavy during the filming of that uh, of their spot in the movie that he just didn't want to didn't want to play it anymore. It was just, it was just cause, cause, you, know, you know when they're filming stuff in a movie, it's hours and hours of standing there, right? And he had this solid mahogany guitar. And he's like, guys, why did I pick this guitar for this for the movie? <laughs> Because it looks so cool, Joe. That's why. Yes. And apparently that one was stolen. He's got other ones lately. And, you know, Joe influenced so many guitar players, you know, myself included. But I would, I never had the cool, the cool, super cool look. And, you know, the way he stand on, stood on stage, he, he said he used to look at himself in the mirror and figure, you know, look at stand. But he got it all from Jeff Beck. Like Jeff Beck was still probably the original cool guy that was... Uh, playing guitar and then you know if you notice early pictures of Joe Perry his hair is kind of like Jeff Beck you know he played you know Les Pauls and Strats just like Jeff Beck um, but then if you look at Slash who grew up with Joe Perry Slash plays Mockingbirds Slash plays you know Les Paul Slash had Perry's 59 Les Paul for a good chunk of time I didn't tell anybody about it but uh but yeah, I think um, Joe Perry, probably one of the coolest guitar players out there. Just the way he looks, the way he is, the way you know, just his his, his whole presence. There's a you know the, the sad side of Joe Perry is he was very messed up in the '70s, and um, as folklore, and you can believe it, and a lot of people do believe it, and I kind of believe it. Uh, a lot of the great guitar parts were played by Steve Hunter from uh, Alice Cooper's regime, I think. Oh, God, am I getting this right? <laughs> uh, anyhow, yeah, uh, so some, like, especially Walk This Way, the solos, they say that we're, we're Steve Hunter and not not Joe, but you know, only, only the people that recorded the album know that. Uh, only because he, uh, you know, when they made, uh, I heard when they made Draw the Line, he, they, he was barely there. He was, they, they recorded it, recorded it in some, old building and they all were living there anyways but it was it was kind of a weird scene and that's why eventually I got into Aerosmith when they were breaking up when Joe left I was I was into Aerosmith and all of a sudden they had Jimmy Crespo on guitar um and shortly after that and so I had I bought this album and my second album I bought was Night in the Ruts which I didn't pull out but uh Night in the Ruts was Joe Perry's last album with the band on, of that era when he left and then um Jimmy Crespo actually, they say, played a little bit on that album. So did a, a few other guitar players that filled in filled in for him when he left. But um, uh, great, the best one of the best quotes about that whole scene was uh, Aerosmith without Joe Perry is like the cheeseburger without the cheese. You know, you just needed Joe Perry and the band. Kind of like how you kind of need Motley Crue and or sorry, you kind of need Mick Mars and Motley Crue if you've seen them with John Five. Um, it just helps the whole situation. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm getting back to my music class. Yeah, he, uh, the, the, my cool teacher, you know, 
took the let let walk this way play and gave it back gave me the album back and then for some kid in the class said uh hey can i borrow that so i can tape it in the beginning of music sharing happened uh no um i didn't get it back for about a year like a year asking the guy every every day every month Finally, I got I got I actually got a friend of mine that lived near that guy to go over to his house and get it, which was pretty. You know, I mean, come on, he probably, he probably just too lazy to bring it to school. Probably didn't even play it. Probably didn't even tape it. You know, taping records, man. Remember that? We used to get cassettes and tape records. That's I guess that's how that's where all, like I said, this is where music sharing started. You know, Metallica wouldn't have had that cult following without all the cassettes for the underground metal people that were passing them around in the 80s, you know. So, you know, sadly, our children will not have the pleasure of going out and buying their favorite album. I mean, it, it's a novelty to buy vinyl right now, but but to have, you know, be waiting to see that in the record store was uh, was a big thing. And um, sadly, music's free now. I, I, hate, I hate to sound bitter about that, but... Yeah, it is. But anyhow, happy 74th birthday to Joe Perry. Um, my, one of my favorite guitar players. Uh, I think, you know, when I was growing up and playing guitar, you wanted to, you know, you weren't that good yet when you first started playing. Your first couple of years, you weren't that great. And I couldn't play the crazy Led Zeppelin fast licks yet or the Van Halen tapping or all that stuff. So we gravitate, I gravitated to some easier stuff that I could play power chords, not saying that Joe's stuff was simple or anything like that, but I could learn an entire album of Aerosmith before I could learn an entire Van Halen album, you know, back then when I was like 12 years old learning how to play guitar. Um, and then, you know, I, I learned a whole whole pile of other like easy stuff. And whenever I heard a power chord, I just figured it out, you know, I think everybody who's my around my 50 something age um, probably was the same way when they're learning how to play guitar. You know, now they got the internet that tells us to do how to do everything, and it's very confusing for people. So get yourself a good guitar teacher. <laughs> Anyhow, cheers, everybody. You got a huge weekend next weekend. Uh, every, pretty, pretty much every project that I'm working with right now is going to be at the St. George Apple Fest. St. George is a small town outside of my town in Brantford, Ontario. Every year they have a huge gathering in the street for Apple Fest, and... Uh, I'll be there. My Mike, Brad, and my friends in Powerglide will be there. Um, Bridge on Fire will be um, last second last act of the of the festivities on Sunday at 2 p.m. If you're coming out in the area, uh, Jacob D'Souza and myself, and possibly possibly Oscar from the Harriets. We don't know if he's coming out yet. Uh, will be at 1:30 on Saturday. Um, that to recap, Bridge on Fire, 2 p.m. Sunday, uh, Avalon Music Academy. We're gonna have a huge uh, bunch of uh, performances by some killer students, as well as a lot of our teachers are gonna perform um, at 11 a.m. on both days. So that's 11 a.m. on. We're opening the show on 11 a.m. Saturday and 11 a.m. Sunday. So come on out. Uh, Shout out to my, my student, Liam LaDuc, who is uh, in the Paris Dover Pipe Band, as well as playing with Avalon on Saturday and Sunday. And I think on Sunday he may have to play with his entire regalia pipe costume on, which would be kind of funny. I think you should do that. You should do that if you're watching. Anyhow, love the BC Rich Amer uh, line from the late 80s. The BC Rich Bitch, the BC Rich Eagle, Seagull, and the Mockingbird, and the gaggle of double necks and stuff like that that they, they made out were a beautiful set of guitars that are still around. People still play them. Um, this is kind of heavy, so I'm going to put it down. Anyways, talk boxes rule. They're a pain to set up, as you know. This show is too long. See you next weekend at Apple Fest, and rock on all my brothers out there who are still playing outside, and when it's... Uh, that's still pretty warm up, what am I saying? Anyways, take it easy, have a good one, bye-bye.